Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat, and today I am doing my first wrap up of August, book 110 to 116. So far in August, I have had no DNFs. I have had a just amazing reading month. Um, I am doing the newts with a twist. So I am going for my magic zoologist, um, exams and also all Australian authors. So I have a stack of books to talk to you guys about today um, and shout out to my local library because they are all from my library except for this one which is mine um, and yeah I'm just in love with my library. I'm having a great reading month. The sky is finally clear so I'm filming today while I have a little bit of sunshine. It's like cloudy sunshine but I'm gonna go with it, thank you, Sky. Um, and we're just gonna get right on into it because I have a lot to talk about, I have a lot to recommend, and I have a lot of new authors that I have found. So yeah, the pretty amazing thing is is that I have never read any of these authors before. So it was pretty cool, um, and I want to share them with you guys. So if you know any of these authors or you are um, new to Australian literature, then I hope that some of these will um, make their way onto your TBR. So we're going to start out with my only two-star um, read of the month, and this is kind of controversial because um, a bunch of people love, love, love this book, and it just was not for me. Um, and this is The Way of Things by Charlotte Wood. So a lot of people were saying that this is The Handmaid's Tale set in the Australian Outback. And I can see why they would say that. Um, this deals with um, a, a bunch of women who are taken from their lives and they are brought into the Australian outback to a compound in the middle of nowhere surrounded by an electric fence. Uh, and they have their head shaved, they have their clothes taken away, they're given like basically burlap sacks. Um, and they are kind of under the care of three people, two men and a woman, and they are told to like do chores, go on marches, like all this kind of stuff um, until they realize that no one is coming for them. So the problem that I had with this is one, I thought that the writing was pretty mediocre and repetitive at times. Um, I also thought that the character development was really lacking. So there's two points of view in this book, but um, I didn't really care for either one. So um, I kind of found it hard to get into into this and to be completely honest the reason I finished this book at all is because I was hoping that there would be something at the end that would happen that would redeem the arcs of the two main characters like their plot arcs, their character arcs, um, however that did not happen really so um, the end confused me and I thought that the entire kind of story was a little pointless. Um, <sighs> Yeah, so I'm more let down than anything because it was such a good idea and the setting was so cool, but I feel like the execution was poor. So the reason I picked this book up um, to read was because it had a rabbit on the cover, which is a land animal, which is one of the challenges for newts. Um, okay, so the next book I want to talk about, I gave three and a half stars, and it is Wimera by Mark Brandy. Now, this book I wanted to love so much. Um, I thought that the writing was really excellent. Um, so we're following two boys who are in kind of a small town. And mm, I really loved the first half of this book. Like the first half of this book is like a four, four and a half star. Um, so I was really, really, really loving it. And um, we're following two boys, Ben and Fab, and their best friends. Um, and it's kind of about how when you're best friends, you kind of accept your best friend even though they're dealing with a lot of stuff. So one of the boys is dealing with abuse in his household and the other boy um, has a neighbor across the street who he starts to build a relationship with as he's like cutting the yard and doing like house care stuff. Um, and then something really bad happens and then about halfway through the book we flip to like, I believe it's like 10 years later. And there is a court trial going on because a body has been found in the river. So, like I said, the first half of this book, like when they're children, was really amazing. Um, but then, like, the second half, when we are in adult mode, it felt like it had been written by a completely different person, and I didn't really connect with the characters at all. It was so frustrating. Um, so, um, yeah, I really did like it, and I will definitely read this author again, um, 
I just was a little let down by how the second half happened and by, I think, the transition. Um, yeah, so three and a half stars for this one. And I read this one um, as the challenge for newts that had green on the cover, which you can see right here. Here. Most of the next books are all four star reads. This is eight, this is four. <laughs> and um, the next one I want to talk about is a nonfiction called The Arsonist by Chloe Hooper. Um, so, this book was actually brought to my attention by Simon at Savage Reads. Um, he has been on a real Australian lit binge lately, and this was one that he was talking about that he loved. So, um, this is following an outbreak of fires which happened in La Trobe Valley in Victoria, which is kind of the state district area that I live. Um, and it happened in 2009. And at first, when the police were investigating, they thought that it might have been an accident or just like a cigarette flicked out of a window, something like that. And when they're investigating, they find that um, instead, they think it was someone who said it intentionally. So the first third of the book is told through the police's perspective, the middle third is told through um, the lawyer's perspective, and then the last third is told through the court perspective. And this book brings up a lot of issues which I hadn't um, known before. It's talking about the socioeconomic um, kind of situation of people who lived in that area and um, about kind of these areas which are from mining mining communities um, that have kind of now become defunct and the areas are really struggling. Um, the person that they think set the fires, or they're not sure if, if he set the fires, um, is found to be uh, mentally disabled. And one of the things that the book talks about is how whether or not it's hard to place blame or not because he can't advocate for himself and the community isn't doesn't have like a natural disposition to help him. They see him more as an outsider or a problem within the community. There's not any services that are free for him in the community. Um, and so it's really hard. It's a really hard situation. And there's a lot of areas to consider that I hadn't known about before. So um, I gave this book four stars. At first, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it because I wasn't that into the writing style in the beginning. I think there were just too many adjectives used. Um, that's just something that really bothers me when there's an abundance of adjective, uh, the adjectives. <laughs> but um, I did get into it after a while and I ended up giving it four stars. Once I understood like that there were gonna be multiple perspectives about this, then it really like just shocked me. Also like there are different interviews and Chloe Hooper did a lot of research on this, like firsthand accounts of how the fire spreads and what people do um, when there's like a fire engulfing their house, like how the flames are so devastating and like just very, there's a lot of discussion of very traumatic events in this book. So um, if you have a weak stomach and like, honestly, it talks about people getting burned alive in here. So if that would be triggering to you, do not read this book. Um, I wasn't expecting that level of graphic detail. Um, and I was a bit shocked that it was in here and I just wanted to let you guys know if <laughs> that is what you are going to read. But um, this book does a really good job of juxtaposing like a need for justice for all of the families who lost their homes, their lands, and their own family members' lives against someone who may not be able to stand up for themselves, who may not know what they're doing or talking about with the police, they may not know that they're um, setting themselves up for like life in prison. Um, so yeah, it's a really great book and it was um, really interesting to read and I do recommend it. Okay, so the next two I read for, I believe it's a plant on the cover and a sequel. So these were um, to finish up, I think I used these for my owls because I had to do my owls and then my newts. Um, so this is Jane Harper, and if you don't know Jane Harper, I consider her now the Australian twin to Gillian Flynn. Like, the writing style is like the best, and I have to have a rule on myself now, like if I'm gonna read a Jane Harper, I need to make sure that I have time to just read for five hours in that day. Like if it needs to be a weekend, or like if I finish my work early one day, because once you start a Jane Harper, you will not be able to put this down. Like this is like proper, amazing like thriller reading. Um, I love Jane Harper's writing style. So in the first one, um, we are following 
a man named Aaron Falk who's a criminal investigator and he actually lives in Melbourne. He actually, his apartment is like right down the road from where I live, which is like crazy. Um, just kind of cool, I guess. But anyway, um, he is contacted when um, something goes on in his hometown and it, there has been a gruesome murder that has taken place of a mother and a child um, and they suspect that the person who did it is a person who was found to have shot himself in the mouth um, in a suicide which was his childhood best friend. So he goes back for the funeral and he starts to unravel things that don't necessarily make the most sense. And this was just high octane stuff. Like I could not put it down. I did not see the twist coming. Like Jane Harper sets up like so many different possibilities and red herrings, like so many breadcrumbs in different directions that like at any one moment I had like three theories going because like I was like, oh my God, like so clever, so clever. Um, this book, it has, yeah, it was the Indie Book of the Year Award winner for 20, 2017. It also won like the Gold Dagger winner. It was the Australian Book Awards winner for 2017. Uh, for general fiction and for book of the year, winner, winner. So like just crazy hype and like it's so good. I'm so glad that I picked this up at an op shop for like $3. Um, just like it was so good. Um, so then I read the next Jane Harper in the same series following Aaron Falk and um, it's Force of Nature. And this one is following um, like five female hikers that go in on a hike of a known trail where like 10 years ago, there was a serial killer who had been killing people on the trail and they disappeared. And when one of the women goes missing, Aaron is called back to investigate. Now this is the same kind of writing style where it switches back and forth between the narrative where Aaron Falk in the beginning is, it's the start of the investigation where he receives like the call or he receives like the information and he's starting to travel to the scene and slowly investigating and the other perspective is the other timeline is the start of the day that the murder took place. So both of these books have that kind of narrative and it is just so good. I cannot tell you how good, how hooked I was. Like I could not stop reading. It was crazy. I like Jane Harper. I love you and I love your writing style. Um, so I will definitely be reading The Lost Man, which is like, I believe, the third one in this series, it just came out and I think that I'm going to love it. Um, but yes, I am really looking forward to all of Jane Harper, like everything she ever writes because I just think that she's amazing. Um, okay, <laughs> so another four star read um, that kind of beats the Jane Harpers in a little bit because I felt really, really connected to the main character here. This is The Choke by Sophie Laguna. Um, now, this one was giving me like like kind of my absolute darling vibes, but with some elements changed. Um, so we are following Justine, who is raised by her grandfather, and the grandfather is a war veteran, and he has a lot of PTSD, and so she's raised in a very, very poor house. Her mother and father basically abandon her. Her father comes back into town kind of like riding in and being like really exciting for like a few weeks and then he like takes off again um, with the law on his heels so he's not like an amazing role model and Justine is just trying to like fit in make it by I guess this book was oh, just like a dagger to the heart like I felt for Justine so so much um, and the reason why this doesn't get like a four and a half for me is the ending the ending like Oh man, there was some there's something that happens and probably like the last 50 pages brought it down from a four and a half to a four to me. Um, but if you are looking for an absolutely beautiful, beautiful character study of a young girl growing up very poor in a small town Australia setting, I highly recommend this. This does have um, trigger warnings for like abuse and uh, sexual violence, but it is just such a strong portrayal and like I still think about things that have happened in this book and just also the relationship between the grandfather and the granddaughter was just so sweet and like but again like every single character has great elements so while the grandfather is so sweet to the granddaughter 
he doesn't fully accept his own daughter who has come out as a lesbian and has been living with her partner and has been a very successful doctor um, for a long time. So there are just so many layers to this book and I really recommend it. Um, it's called The Choke by Sophie Laguna. Um, I will be reading more from Sophie Laguna for sure. It was so good and it was just really, really amazing. Um, okay. So now we are to my best book of kind of this first wrap up of August, and it is Eggshell Skull by Brie Lee. Now, <laughs> this one blew me away, like honestly. So if the other one, The Arsonist, was about the fire outbreaks in Australia, this one is delving into the criminal justice system in Australia. And it was shocking. Like, I was shocked. Like, so many times reading this, I was, like, reading this, and I, like, would stop and say to my husband, like, do you know that in Australia, and my husband is Australian, so just for some context, I'm American. And I was like, do you know that in Australia, blah, 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 And he's like, I didn't know that. That's shocking. And we were shocked. We were shook. Um, so in this one, we are following Brie Lee. This is a memoir, by the way. Um, Brie Lee, who is a judge's assistant. So the first half of this book is her journey around as a judge's assistant um, and kind of seeing the different cases that she goes through throughout the year and all of the stuff that she sees and witnesses. So um, there are numerous talks about how um, people that are disadvantaged in the system are either bullied by the people, victims are bullied by the people that they are um, trying to stand up against um, or the system just kind of pounds them down and whether due to fees or due to waiting or due to <clears throat> inavailability of different people at certain times like judges or you know witnesses the system can just be really brutal for anyone trying to prove their case um, so she brings up the idea of eggshell skull so if you are not a lawyer eggshell skull means that you take your victim as you find them so um, the definition is basically like if you punch someone or hit them in the head um, and you expect it to just be like a light slap but it actually kills them because they have a really sh really thin eggshell like skull then you would be tried for killing them not for punching them um, and it's kind of you take your you have to take your victim as you find them so she said she wonders like if this can be flipped on its head where she is the victim which she comes to terms with throughout the first half of the book and she remembers an assault that had happened to her in childhood. So she, the second half of the book is her going into her own court case. And she says, well, if eggshell skull works in a lot of ways to kind of beat down and pummel the victim, it also works the other way. The person who victimized me will have to deal with an extremely knowledgeable ex-lawyer's assistant, a um, person who's not going to back down, not going to take a plea deal, and will wait it out to get the justice that she deserves and that she wants. So this book just like blew me away, it like blew my freaking mind. Um, and I gave it four stars. Um, I think that I might give it four and a half stars. I'm waiting to see like on the staying power of it, but I so highly recommend this. But there is so much trigger alert warnings because of course the first half of the novel is following through different court cases of sexual abuse, incest, like just um, physical abuse, mental abuse, like victim, all sorts of abuse. So like if that is something you are particularly sensitive to, I highly recommend you to not read this. Please just don't, don't read this. Don't put yourself through it. Don't. Um, so, but if that is something that you can stomach, um, then I really, really so highly recommend this. Um, it just blew me away. Like everything about the Australian legal system and also how strong Brie Lee is, like, wow. Like, totally, totally blew my mind, and I highly recommend it. Eggshell Skull by Brie Lee. I will be picking up a copy for myself um, the next time I see it in the bookstore. So this was a library read, but one of the ones that will be making it onto my shelves. Um, because as you guys know, I only read, I only buy books from op shops for cheap, or if I have really, really, really loved them, um, and this is the one of recent reads that I will absolutely be getting my hands on to like loan out to everyone, like ASAP. So that finishes up my first round of the newts. Um, so 
I did a fair bit of reading. I, how many was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That was seven books that I have finished so far. Um, I think my challenge is either 11 or 12 books. So I have, I think, four more to get to. I think that's right. Four more or five more to get to, to complete the newts. So I am doing really well. I hope that you are as well. If you have seen any books that you are going to try, let me know down below. I love to hear from you. Um, and I will see you in another video. Bye.